So about three years ago, I felt a lump in my wrist. Yes, a lump. I was smiling now, but I wasn't funny then. I was taking my usual longer shower. I was still in med school by then. And I felt this lump around my neck. And I was wondering, what could that be? But during that time, I never paid close attention to this breast cancer screening and whatever we do on October. But at that moment, I realized I wish I knew much more than I knew then. So if you are here today, I'm going to educate you on breast cancer, on breast self exam, and what to do when you find a lamp in your breast. So stay tuned. So welcome back to my channel, everyone. If you are a visiting subscriber, I'm Dr. Yun Bieli, and on this channel, I speak about all things related to medicine, be it educational, be it entertainment, and what to do. If you're already a part of us, I'm so grateful you are here once so again. So yes, for my lamp in my breast, I didn't continue on what happened. So I think I tried to convince myself that, oh, it's nothing and it will soon go away. But consistently, I could still feel the lamp in my breast. So at a point in time, I had to go to the hospital. And imagine, I was in China by then, and it was during COVID era. Okay, so let's talk about breast cancer. Let's talk about the breast. What does the breast do for us? <laughs> what is the breast all about? Right? So the breast is a mammary organ. It slides below the clavicle and then just the above the head to sit breast. So when you look at the breast, and if my chest is off and you are looking at my breast, you see my skin on it. You see a nipple and an areola. And when you go into the breast tissue, you find fat cells, a case of sensory ligaments, bones. Find that you find vessels so the arteries, the veins, the lymph nodes, and all come together to make up this breast. The breast lies on top of certain muscles, okay, in the chest. So that is the breast. In recent times, we found a lot of uses for the breast, but the main use of the breast is to make breast milk and for breastfeeding. That the breast also plays an important role in sexual activity. It also plays a cosmesis role where it makes females look, you know, heavy and give them their feminine look. So unfortunately, those of us who have breast have a higher risk of having breast cancer. Breast cancer is one of the most leading causes of death in females, unfortunately. First, I have noticed that most women who come to the hospital either come with complaints of pain in their breast or they have noticed a lump in their breast just like I did. They also sometimes have discharges coming from their breast, either bloody, other men to discharge, okay. Or the symmetry of the breast has changed. One looks so bigger than the other, okay. That's also one of the reasons why they come to the hospital. If you, they notice a change in their nipple, the nipple is retracted, one is gone in, the other is swimming in another direction, makes them alarm when it comes. Sometimes the, the breast seems to have changed in color. The hyperpigmentations or maybe hypopigmentations on the breast, the breast seems edematous. You notice this cold the orange look where the, the, the breast looks like an orange, okay, with all those dim plain in the breast. So those are some of the reasons why people come and seek medical attention in the hospital. What are some of the risk factors of breast cancer? So we have modifiable causes and non-modifiable causes. Non-modifiable causes are causes you can do nothing about. The modifiable risk factors are factors that you play a role in. You can make a change. First, aging. You cannot change the fact that you are aging. In the past, we used to look out for breast cancers in people in the age ranges of 60 and above. But unfortunately, of late, we are considering even people age of 35 or more. If your mother had breast cancer, your grandma had breast cancer, your grandma's sister had breast cancer, whatsoever, then you are at the risk of developing breast cancer. Then in your menstruation too, if you started your menstruation too early in life or menopause too late in life, and then you are also at risk of developing breast cancer because you are, your body is exposed to a lot of estrogen. 
or if you are on hormone replacement therapy, if you are taking estrogen, in a way that could be modifiable and that could be non modifiable, especially if you are taking estrogen for health purposes, right? Then that makes it a bit non modifiable. Variations are also a cause of breast cancer, that's like an environmental factor. Talking about the modifiable factor, what you and I can do or make a change in, are talking about diet, we are talking about smoking, we are talking about alcohol, we are talking about obesity. If you do not like exercise and then you are calling breast cancer, not even just breast cancer, all other illness. So these things are things that we can make a change. You can change the way you eat, you can change the fact that you take alcohol, you can change the fact that you smoke. So in saying all this, when you, you, you have these risk factors and then you examine yourself and you find out that, oh, there's something abnormal about my breast, then you have to see a healthcare professional. When you do come to the hospital, what we will do is that we'll take a clinical history from you. We'll ask you certain questions about your lifestyle, about your family. We will then examine you. So I'll be doing a video on self breast examination, so you just look out for that video next for this one. We would examine you, then you have to do an imaging. He is an ultrasound, he is a mammogram. Okay. So ultrasounds, we normally use it for people who are younger and have denser breasts. And the mammogram, we use it for less dense breasts. So you find out that the elderly people who drift towards the side of mammograms will need the younger ones ultrasound based on the imaging report and um, associated with our clinical findings we will make a diagnosis and then subsequently manage whatever it is we will normally biopsy the breast to know if it's benign or cancerous thank you so much for watching this video i hope it was short precise and you understood all that i spoke about if you have any questions kindly leave it in the comment section below so don't forget to like comment and subscribe to my channel thank you so much for having me so watch out for my next video which is going to be on breast self-exam bye